symbols. They're the foundation of tarot and they're the foundation of art. In this video, I want to share with you how a tarot practice can make you a better artist and why creating your own personal library of symbols is one of the best things you can do to improve your art today. Learning tarot helps you realize how powerful symbols are. Tarot is purely symbols. And learning tarot is the process of becoming familiar with what those symbols mean to a level of understanding where our intuition and our subconscious mind can then step in and make connections. It's a combination of both our left and right brain. And depending on your personal beliefs, higher energies, all working in harmony so we can achieve insight. Yes, you can just pick up a tarot deck without any prior knowledge of the meaning of the symbols or the cards and just purely work off intuition. But you'd still be looking at the symbols and from your own personal point of view, giving them new meanings. So either way, whether you choose to learn the traditional meanings or, you know, you just pick up a deck of cards and go, you're still uh, giving meaning to visual symbols. So the experienced tarot reader is usually a combination of both of those styles. They're going to have a good thorough knowledge of the traditional meanings, but they're also going to bring their own unique perspective and their own intuition to their readings of the cards. However it's approached, tarot is the synthesizing of symbols. And one of the best examples as to how powerful symbols are. The tarot itself can be seen as a journey through archetypes, which are sort of symbols in themselves that all people across time and culture can understand. Learning tarot is learning that everything has meaning if we choose to see it. What appears to be a really simple illustration at first glance is actually loaded with layers and layers and layers. From the items included, down to even the colours you use for different areas of the card. Everything has a purpose, everything has layers, and there's always more to the story than meets the eye. It's all down to how deep we're willing to go. So great art through time is full of symbolism. Great art is a feeling and an intellectual exercise. Sometimes we can't put a finger on why a certain piece makes us feel a certain way. And I think it would surprise a lot of people to realize that it's actually our subconscious minds processing the symbols that we're seeing. The imagery, the colors, the composition that an artist chooses, these can all be representations of a concept or an idea and full of hidden meaning. The symbolist movement in art was a movement based on feelings and concepts and individuality rather than on painting reality. They believed in the significance of colour, shape, line and tone instead of the actuality of the object itself. The movement also had a spiritual essence to it, a belief that there was existence beyond the physical world. And the artists used symbolic representation and abstract ideas to portray their truths. So there's a great and universal meaning to some symbols. The skull usually symbolizes death. The sun is life and hope and strength. And a heart symbolizes love. So these are obviously just some very obvious examples, but there's some really great books that you can delve into to read about the symbols in our collective unconscious and how we perceive them. So why should you create your own personal library of symbols in your art? As artists, we can use symbols in ways that are really readily understandable and readable by the viewer, but we can also use symbols in new ways. We can not only use symbols with already prescribed meaning, but we can create our own deeply personal library of symbols to tell the story that we want to tell in our work. The symbolism in our art can be cryptic, it can be illusory, it can be deeply personal. It can be layered and complex. Utilizing these universal symbols and also our own personal symbology can take our art to a totally new level where our technical skill and what we want to say about and to the world meet. So maybe you're thinking this kind of art must lean towards some kind of surrealism? That to tell a story through symbols, there must be some kind of abstract representation of concepts. 
but not necessarily. Throughout time, landscape paintings have contained symbolism. Still lifes are rife with meaning. The objects, the clothes, the jewellery and portraits are symbolic. As an artist, your paintings can definitely stay in the realm of reality if that's your style, but still be loaded with your ideas and your point of view in countless different ways. The location or time of day you choose to paint, uh, the flowers or plants that you choose, the animals, the characters, the objects, all of these are opportunities to layer more nuance and personal storytelling into your art. So now more than ever with social media, we're just bombarded with images every day. And it's so easy for us to play the comparison game with other artists. And with the complete astronomic rise of AI art, which I mean, we have to be real with ourselves, is creating some amazingly stunning images. It's pretty much impossible to not at least sometimes feel disheartened as, you know, just a regular human artist. But through developing and using our own personal symbols in our art, we're not just creating pretty pictures. We're introducing our own completely unique ideas into the collective unconscious and creating things that honestly AI could never create. Our completely unique perspective and ways that we see the world from our completely unique lives can just never be replicated. And that is our purpose to share. It can give us new confidence in our art because we have greater purpose behind what we create. And there'll be this greater connection with your art when your artwork has these layers to it, kind of almost like a puzzle that your audience can solve and also to project their own selves onto, creating their own story. So I really hope you feel inspired to start injecting your own very unique and personal symbols into your art. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This is my first video on uh, tarot and art, but I really do feel like there's so much to explore in this topic. And I'm really hoping to make more videos on like art and spirituality and how they sort of intermingle deliciously. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.